at the new place. Anyway, I uh, wanted to just talk about a little bit of what sets a guitar vial apart. As you notice, this is a guitar essentially, and you can bow it. And a lot of people may compare it to something like a viola de gamba or, you know, violin, electric violin, could get in there with the cello. And it's true that we can get it in, into some of those ranges. And a little tune-up would be good here at this point. But anyway, um, the one thing that sets it apart is a lot of people expect, you know, fretless or, or you know, classically vibrato instruments. And in the 20th century, as we know, we had uh, guitars, uh, electric guitars, all the guys like Hendrix and Clapton and everybody who had any kind of really shaky vibrato. I think I learned my vibrato watching B.B. King on TV as a kid back in the 70s. How he would um, have this sort of uh, heavy hand and you know he'd be able to just kind of get the kind of thing. These are a little heavier so I uh, don't bend as much on the G. It is a wound G. Um, but anyway, you can see that you know there's there uh, there are a lot of possibilities here. You know, take off a little of that edge there. Carl Clark out in um, Kentucky. You can see it has these nice Coca-Bolo knobs on it, this uh, patina copper plate, and it's just going to naturally uh, change colors and change vibes over time. It's, you know, sort of got a little bit of vibe to this thing. Over here, this is one that is uh, being put together. This is the uh, Naked Naughty Spartan. Now, the Naked Spartan model, as some of you know, is a natural hand rubbed finish. And um, anyway, we took it a step farther. I uh, purposefully found a piece of wood that had this knot in it, uh, hence the word knotty. And uh, anyway, Robbie out in um, Georgia uh, has um, wanted to take it a step farther and implant uh, Leonidas's head in here. So this is a, a unique custom one of a kind. Over here, this is actually paying me a visit. It, it came back from uh, Steve uh, Oime uh, from Arizona. And uh, what we did um, is he decided he wanted to opt for the um, MIDI option. And so now he can run a, a MIDI cable to this one. Now this plate will come right out. And you know if you have a standard one, say like the one that uh, Carl has here, and if he decided later he wanted the MIDI option, that would be not a problem. So, anyway, there you have it. And you can see this one has all the H marks and stuff like that. We've uh, featured this one in the uh, Bistro blog before. Maybe you can see it in a slightly different lighting. And uh, this one had purposeful aging on it. And uh, we also wanted to get sort of a more of a modest uh, flame on it. In other words, we didn't want to go out of our way getting a tin top. 
uh, kind of wanted some sort of real honest vibe to it. This is my personal instrument here. This is the um, uh, uh, standard Cana model with the, um, um, I would say, the vintage Sunburst, which has been pretty popular. You can see that this is um, the Coca Bolo, and mine's getting a little darkened from all the playing. I'm starting to put a coating on to preserve that a little bit. Now, you notice my uh, fretboard is scalloped, and that's just a playing preference that I personally have, and not for everybody. Anyway, it sounds like the phone is ringing, and we're going to wrap this one up. Togamanguitars.com. T O G A M A N G U I T A R S. Thank you for listening.